Hi, welcome to church. Before we begin, we'd like to let you know a little bit about us here at Magnolia Center Church of Christ. At Mag Center, we strive to be a Jesus church. Now, we're far from perfect, but we believe in loving our neighbor no matter what. We believe that church is a place that you should feel welcome and valued. Everyone has a place and can belong. We hope that you'll make Mag Center Church your church home. But above all else, we want you to know that God loves you more than you can ever imagine. Let's worship together. Thank you. 
maker, creator. Our maker, creator. Before time began. Before time began. Messiah and Savior. Messiah and Savior. Redeemer and friend. Redeemer and friend. Our rock of salvation. Our rock of salvation. So faithful and true. So faithful and true. We give all the glory. We give all the glory. And honor to you. All who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy. As deep cries out to deep, come Lord Jesus, 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 come Lord Jesus. Dip your heart in the stream of life Let the pain and the sorrow Be washed away In the waves of His mercy As deep cries out to deep We sing, come Lord Jesus Good morning, church. Just want to say that it is an honor to bring you this message as we gather around the Lord's table at this time. I was thinking about the past events of 2021 amongst all the things that our country and our world have been facing. I realized that in my life, I was filled with times that I could rejoice and also with times of suffering. In just the past year, I watched a close friend of mine join in marriage with the love of his life. I also faced two deaths in my family. I learned that I'm going to be a grandfather, also known as Papa, 
And I also watched and counseled one of my siblings through a difficult divorce. I enjoyed a week long road trip with my wife and kids over the summer and also faced insecurities every day as I looked at myself in the mirror. We all have our ups and we all have our downs in this life, uh, trials of many kinds. You know, some may be facing similar things that I've listed or, or you have your own experiences that you are going through now or recently have gone through. Uh, but the one thing that we know for sure has not and will never change is the mercy of God our Father. It is just how we act toward God in these times of suffering that proves our faith in him. Please follow along as I read from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So you see, it is through the genuineness of our faith that we must find Jesus, not just in the ups of our lives, but also in the downs that come along. How we live through our times of suffering is an important reflection of our faith. It says that we are receiving the end result of our faith, which is the salvation of our souls. This is a promise. It is a promise because Jesus gave his life so that we may have the, the chance and, and the ability to, to join him in heaven and to take that inheritance that God has provided for us. And through faith, we take this bread and this cup as we remember Jesus being our perfect sacrifice. We know that through the scripture, Jesus spent his time on this earth serving God and serving others for their own good. We know that he brought joy to his people. He brought hope through miracles and he gave love as love was intended unconditionally. But let's not forget that he also suffered much at the end of his ministry. If you ask me, there is no tri trial or, or suffering that we can face in this world today that can compare to Jesus taking on the sins, past, present, and future of the entire history of mankind through death on a cross. So as we take the time to break this bread and, and drink of this cup, which we'll pray for here in a moment, I ask that we contemplate our faith in God. Let us all present a faith like Christ did, one that is genuine and complete, so we may receive our inheritance, the salvation of our souls. And yes, there will be times in life that are difficult, times that bring sadness and fear, doubt, insecurities, and, and all of those negative descriptions of things that we face every day and that are happening around the world and around our homes. But it's through those times and how we act and how we live within those trials that proves the genuineness of our faith in Christ. And let's always just remember, there is no trial we can face that can compare to the trial of Jesus facing the cross. Let us pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this time to uh, take of this bread and to take of this cup in remembrance of your son's loving and willing sacrifice on the cross. We know that you presented him to this world as the salvation and as the hope and as the love that comes only through you, that through mercy and through grace, that you put him in a place of ministry, 
that he may show the people that he was with and through your word show us today what it means to be a follower of you and we just thank you that your son was willing to serve you and to obey you all the way to the the time of his death on the cross that through his resurrection from the dead back to life we have been given the hope of eternal life and inheritance with you in heaven i ask that you will bless each person that takes of this bread and of this cup that we take it in a manner that pleases you that remembers your son and that proves our faith in christ it's in jesus name we pray amen
Thank you so much for joining us. I pray that our time together will help you experience Jesus and share His grace. We're in the middle of our On Your Mark, the Journey with Jesus sermon series. And we, last week we were in Mark chapter 3, and we talked about how Jesus healed the man with a withered hand on the Sabbath day. Jesus was talking about how it's always the right time to do the right thing. And so we issued a challenge. The leadership here issued a challenge to the congregation to, to take some time during the week and to reach out our hands to help others who might be in need. And so I'm just so excited about all the stories I'm hearing about how you as a church are individually reaching out to people's lives and, and sharing with them the love of Jesus. This week we have Carolyn Power sharing her story about reaching out a hand and helping someone to share the grace of Jesus and to demonstrate His love. Carolyn, I'd love to hear your story. Good morning, church. This week, Joe's challenge to us has to do with service and how ser we serve Jesus by serving others. This week's challenge was especially important to me because service is one of my love languages. It's something that is incredibly important to my life and enough so that I chose a career where I could serve others. So I went into teaching over 20 years ago and my full focus was on helping students, helping them be better students, helping them be better people, helping them learn. I went into uh, this position that I'm currently in, which is at the district office, um, a little over five years ago. And in this role, I can serve teachers as well as students. And I serve students um, through programs that I run and create, and I serve teachers by giving them support and helping them out. But my job is stressful um, and it is intense and it is nonstop. And there are times where I found that um, I just, I'm exhausted by the end of the day and it's a mental exhaustion because my brain has been fragmented in so many different ways throughout the day, answering this person and helping that person and communicating with a student over here and I'm just, I'm wiped by the end of the day. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever had this experience where you love to serve, but it drains you, it empties you. It takes everything out of you. And I've learned that I have to fill that back up again. I have to find ways where I can continue to care about the teachers that I serve and continue to care about the students that we collectively serve because that is the heart of, of the, the role that I have and I am continually serving Jesus by serving these people. One of the ways that I connect that, that, that getting that filled up is through worship. I love worship. I love singing songs of praise. I love hearing your voices collectively lifting up our God in, in worship and in praise. I love, um, being able to express myself through song um, because it is a completely different way of expression than what I get to do on a regular basis through words and through writing and through talking to people. I've also found that I've been given opportunities for others to serve me. And I can remember my grandma said at one point, don't deny somebody the ability to bless you because you're stealing the blessing from them. They enjoy serving you. And so don't deny them that. This week, I, um, I if, don't know if any of you guys have heard, but we have a, a severe sub shortage in our schools across the nation and Riverside is no different. And um, so as managers, we've been put on lists to go out and sub in uh, schools and my day came up on Tuesday and I was asked to go sub at, in a preschool, a special ed preschool. If you know me, I'm a high school person. I'm not a preschool person, but I told them, yes, I would go. 
And then I went into work in the morning because I didn't have to be there until um, until like 11.15. And I went into work in the morning and talked to my colleague and uh, I said, so I'm gonna need your help today because I've got this big project that I have to do, but I also need to go sub for these preschoolers. And I said, unless you want to sub for the preschoolers. Totally didn't think that he would take that one because who would want to do that? And he goes, oh, let me think about it. And about 10 minutes later, he comes to me and he's like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to the preschool. <laughs> and God bless my colleague, William, because he served me in a way that uh, truly blessed my life that day. And so I just want to encourage you guys, you have opportunities. You have opportunities to bless others through serving them, and you have opportunities to bless others by accepting their service to you. And I hope you guys have a great week this week. Good morning, church. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. I want us to start off by turning in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4, and we're going to be starting in verse 21. Mark chapter 4, verse 21 and following. Will you please stand with me for the reading of the word of the Lord? He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed? and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The word of the Lord. So this week we're, we're on this journey with Jesus and we're in Mark chapter 4 verse 21 and there's a lot of things that have been going on since last week. Last week we left Jesus leaving the synagogue having healed the man with the withered hand and upsetting all the re local religious leaders by healing, doing good on the Sabbath day and, and Jesus tries to share with them saying, hey, you know what? It's always the right time to do good. And so a lot has happened since that moment in time. Jesus has fed the multitude. He's appointed his 12 disciples and is kind of going out on this journey and he's named them. He's being challenged by people in the community that, that he's healing people by the power of Satan. And Jesus says that doesn't make any sense. Because only by the power of God can we drive out enemies of God. And so it's, Jesus begins to teach, and we see these great parables that he's unfolding, and that kind of sets us up in chapter 4 of Jesus' teaching. He's gone throughout the highways and the byways. He's, he's gone inside his hometown and outside his hometown, declaring the kingdom of God. And here we see that this is the first recorded lessons that Jesus has as he's making his journey around. And so Mark has pulled these lessons together saying, these are the things that were challenging the people. And so Jesus tells the parable of the sower. We, we, we see that story. And he, he unloads this fact about why the parables were written. You see that Jesus says, I'm trying to, to get people to go deeper. If you just pass off my teachings as silly little stories, then I'm no threat to you. But he says, if you are somebody searching the kingdom of God, then you will dig deeper. You will confront this teaching and be challenged by this teaching of what the kingdom of heaven is truly like. And so that's where we find ourselves in the context of, of Mark chapter 4, verses 21. You see, everywhere that Jesus goes, he is asking the people to, to consider who Jesus is. Throughout the entire book of Mark, Mark is asking this question, who do you say that Jesus is? He begins by saying with Mark 1.1 that this is the gospel, the good news of Jesus, the Christ, the King, the Son of God, that He is the one that we lead, He's the one that leads us, and He is calling for our allegiance and our surrender. 
And he's, he's showing you the power by which he heals. and He's showing you how he, he throws demons out. And how he's bringing the kingdom of God right there in the midst of God's people. And here he's teaching the kingdom of God is at hand. And he shares the power of parables. And this week's parable is one that I want us to pay close attention to because I think if we want to follow Jesus, we really need to understand the parable of the light and the lamp and the dark bushel basket. So let's set up the stage here. This, this sounds like such a, an easy teaching, that what Jesus presents to the people here. He says, you have a lamp. It is your source of light. Is the purpose of this lamp to then be covered by a basket? Is that kind of the purpose of what a lamp is supposed to be like? And of course, anyone can tell you that the purpose of a lamp is to illuminate, to share light, to bring light into dark places. Very rarely do we find ourselves in the dark, turn on a flashlight, and then stick it in our pocket. Very rarely do we go into the darkest places and in hopes to, to bring illumination, whether by torch or flashlight, a candle, do we take that source of light into the darkness and then do we hide it? Reject the purpose of these light bearers. Why in the world would you cover up the light when you're surrounded by darkness? You see, that's the question that Jesus is asking to his people as he's teaching. He's wanting them to know that something special is going on. The kingdom of God is breaking into the world. And this is good news that needs to be shared with the world. And yet, church, we are to be the light bearers. We are to bring the good news of the kingdom of heaven into this world that is broken, full of pain and suffering and darkness and yet, I think Jesus' challenge to us today, church, is the fact that we have been given as agents of light. We are to be a city set on a hill to illuminate the hope of the kingdom come. To share the light of Christ in our world. And yet, I think too often we find ourselves hiding the light, the hope that Jesus brings to us. Jesus tells us in Mark 4, verse 21, He said, Is a lamp brought to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? The first question I want us to consider today, church, is the fact that are we hiding our light? I remember going into a cavern in, in this amazing cave system in Tennessee, and I remember experiencing what is called absolute darkness. There was no light anywhere. You could not see your hand in front of your face. You could see nothing. It was pitch black. And I remember when our tour guide just flickered his little flashlight. And that darkness was immediately illuminated. That little bit of light in the midst of all that darkness shone what felt like for miles. And church, we like to sit and complain about how our world is, is going to hell. We like, we like to sit and say, you know, the people don't come to church like they used to. There's so many problems in this world. And there's just so much brokenness and pain in this world. And we just complain about how the news is always telling bad stories. And, and we, we talk about how bad that people are treating us in traffic. We talk about how prices are going up. And, and people have so many problems and that people are sick. And there's so much going wrong in the world 
world and it's so dark. And yet we fail to consider maybe the world is dark because we have refused to shine the light of the love of Jesus in the world. I think too often churches like to sit and complain in their safe places in their pews, but when God calls us to step out into the uncomfortableness of the darkness of this world, of the pain and the suffering that is, that is into this world, that we refuse to shine the light. We try to hide our witness. We try to hide our testimony. We try to hide the fact that Jesus is the only salvation for the world. Scripture says He is the light of the world. And that we are to reflect that light. But I think, church, too often we have, for whatever reason, we have sat down and tried to hide our light. Why is it that we have tried to hide the witness and the testimony of Jesus? Are we too afraid? Are we afraid that people may look at us as, as religious fanatics? Are we afraid that maybe if, if you shared the love of Jesus with someone that they might reject you? And you're afraid of that rejection. You don't want to be looked at as a religious nut. Maybe you're afraid of, of, of sharing your faith wrong. Maybe you just don't know what to say. Church, I understand all of those reasons, but I'm here to tell you, you were made to shine. Your purpose for creation was to illuminate this dark world with the love of Jesus Christ. God is not looking for us to go out and judge other people and condemn other people. What God is calling us to do is to shine the light of Jesus into the lives of people that we meet. And that we shouldn't be afraid. In fact, I think it's interesting. You have this, this image that Jesus uses. When you shine a light, what do you do? Do you, do you put a basket over it? Do you try to hide it under the bed? Have you ever thought about how those, both of those images are extremely flammable? Think about it. He says, do you take a lamp... It's got oil in it, and you light the lamp, and you set it on fire, and then, and then you cover it up with a wicker basket. A basket that's made of dried leaves and, and twigs. What would happen if you were to put a wicker basket over an oil lamp or over a live candle? It's going to set things on fire because it's not made to be hidden. Can you imagine putting a candle underneath your bed? That's dangerous. And I think what is interesting is that the image that Jesus uses when we try to hide our light actually creates more dangerous situations than we actually fulfill our purpose in illuminating the darkness. We sometimes try to hide our light because we might be afraid of the dangers that it might come. But Jesus says, no, when you try to conceal your light, that's when the danger comes. That's when the threat comes because the world needs your light of Jesus in the world. And God has called us as his people not to be afraid, but to demonstrate in the dark places of our world the ever illuminating love of Jesus Christ. You were created to be a light bearer in a dark world. Boldly illuminate the darkness in this world. The second thing I think Jesus is sharing with us here is this, is a lamp brought to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on a lampstand? So you have this beautiful image that your purpose is to shine. And then he goes on and says, For there is nothing hidden except 
to be disclosed. Nor is there anything secret except that which will come to light. Let everyone to hear. Let everyone with ears hear and listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The second thing I think Jesus is wanting us to pay attention to, number one, church, your purpose is to shine. But also, recognize the fact that the truth can't be hidden. You see, Scripture tells us that God's Word will not return to Him void. As it searches out the earth, that God's Word goes. That it will not return to Him empty. That we cannot hide the truth. I remember the prophet saying, I, I tried to, to hold back the words of the Lord, but I could not because the words of the Lord burned within me and I had to share the truth of God's Word. Church, we live in a world that tries to hide the truth. There are churches all over the world that, that, that when you come in on a Sunday morning, there are secrets that somebody has tried to check at the door so that nobody knows this true darkness of their hearts and their sins. Jesus says there is nothing that is hidden that will not be illuminated. One of the most powerful things that the church is called to do is to confess our faults one toward another. And the, the church is to be a people that, that don't have hidden secrets. They don't have hidden sins because they confess one to another and they confess towards God. that They're not trying to hide anything from God. But also, Jesus says, you can't be hiding the truth from those who need it either. So to be a Christian is, is to confess, to bring to light your sinfulness. But you're also to bring to light God's good forgiveness. I think it's interesting how that Scripture teaches us that if we confess our faults toward another and stop trying to hide our weaknesses, that God's will be done. Because Satan has no claim on us if we confess what our faults are. And when we confess what our faults are, we allow God's power to move within us, to be changed by the power and to drive out the darkness through the light of Jesus. What we see in Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 25, is this image that we are to be light bearers. And in order to be light bearers, we need to have the darkness out of us. We need to be illuminated first before we can shine light for others. And I know some of you are sitting there thinking, you know, I, I have so much stuff in my life that, that I could never share the light of Jesus. And, and I'm here to tell you that if you're willing to share your weaknesses, then you are able to share the light of Jesus. Because what Christians are called to be is not perfect, but be to forgiven. We are called as forgiven illustrations of the love and the light of God coming into the darkness and driving the darkness away. It's not our abilities that illuminates ourselves. It's not our rule keeping that is illuminating ourselves. It is the love and the forgiveness of God indwelled into our lives, recognizing that He has forgiven us and that we are the beloved of God, that that makes us radiate His love. As a preacher once said, there's nothing special about me. I'm just one hungry beggar telling another beggar where to find food. You see, our satisfaction, our forgiveness is only in Jesus Christ. Let's not hide that powerful, forgiving love. Finally, we see here in Jesus, it says, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure that you get. And still more, what will be given to you. For those who have, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything they have will be taken away. 
This is a very powerful statement of Jesus. I want to set the stage a little bit here that Jesus is declaring the kingdom of God to the people who are looking for deliverance. And Jesus says, I'm, I'm declaring the word of the Lord. I am the word of the Lord. I'm, I'm giving you light and life. But you can either choose to accept it or you can choose to reject it. But notice what is given to you. If you accept it and you share it, it will be illuminated. It will be, it will be, it'll grow. But that which you receive, you've been given the free gift of God. And yet, if you hide it, if you don't value it, if you're not willing to act upon it, that light which you've been given will be taken away because you don't trust in it. You're not willing to accept it. You're not willing to share this love, this hope. The words of Jesus have just come something that you come to believe, you check the boxes. But yet, has it changed our lives? Has it illuminated our hearts? Has it illuminated our actions? Has the love of Jesus taken root in our hearts? Have we been bearing fruit to the amazing love of Jesus Christ? Remember the whole story of Mark is, who do you say that Jesus is? And according to this parable, Jesus wants you to recognize that He is the light. And that you are to be light bearers. And that if you truly appreciate and hold on to that light, you will share the love and the hope of Jesus. You will share your weaknesses and testimony about how Jesus' love overcomes sin in your life. And then you live a changed person, letting Jesus' light illuminate your steps along the way. He says, that is our hope, that is our joy, that is our purpose. Stop trying to hide the love of Jesus. Stop trying not to tell others about the love of Jesus. Stop refusing to be changed by the love of Jesus. Following Jesus is not a religion, it's a relationship. It's not about doing all the right things at the right times. It's all about following God with your full heart and letting other people see how that Jesus loves you and how it's changing you inside and out. This week is our challenge. Every week we've been challenging our members to, to, to spend some time with Jesus. And this week, this is our challenge. I believe that confession is a beautiful practice of the early church and it's commanded of us in Scripture. Now, what do I mean by confession? There's lots of different terminologies and a lot of different definitions of what confession is. Let me define what I'm talking about when I say confession. Scripture tells us to confess your faults one towards another. You see, when we have the power of confession in our lives, we have accountability in our lives. We're willing to own up to our mistakes and we're, we're willing to let the light of God shine in our dark hearts and in our dark places in our, that we, we try to hide from everybody else. But when we are willing to confess our faults one towards another, then God's light will shine through us. Your challenge this week is to have a moment of confession with someone you trust in the church. I'm not asking you to declare your deepest, darkest sin and go into all your great details. I challenge you to share with one person this week the struggles that you're having within your faith, the struggles that you're having with bad habits, bad thoughts, bad practices. I want you to pray to God first Give, ask Him to give you the strength to share with someone that you trust. 
You don't have to go announce it to the entire world. I'm not saying put it on social media and Facebook. I'm saying find a godly person that you trust and confide in them your struggle and have them pray for you as well. Let this be our practice this week as we try to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. May we shine His light in our hearts and in our lives, and may we never hide it again. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank You so much for loving us. Thank You for forgiving us and giving the light of Jesus to illuminate our lives. Forgive us when we try to hide that amazing gift. Father, forgive us when we hide sins and secrets in our hearts. May you transform us from the inside out by the love of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you so much for spending time together with us today. And I pray that this time has helped you experience Jesus and to share his grace. Be blessed. There's a call come streaming o'er the restless waves in the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. 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 Send the light.
and with joy in our hearts and singing a song. Don't put our light out. Don't let Satan blow our light out. Don't hide our light. We are so blessed with Jesus Christ in our life. And sometimes I think myself, I know, we let other things distract us from that light. And we might be embarrassed to share Jesus at a moment in our lives or other distractions. So this morning, as we sang that song, and we think about this little light of mine. If each one of us bring this little light of mine together when we worship, that one little light becomes a blaze, a flame, if you will. So thank you this morning for joining us, and we just love you. If you would, would you join me in a closing prayer? Father, thank you for being such an incredibly good father to us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for another day of life that we are able to come together unharmed and able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the relationship we have with him, for the example he is to us. Father, your most precious gift, and we thank you and give you praise for that, Father. Father, I pray for those who are not able to join us at nine o'clock during our worship service time. And I pray that those who are not able to watch online services, that you will be with them. If they're dealing with physical problems, physical challenges, health issues, financial issues, or just issues of life, Father, just be with them. Bless them, watch over them. If it's health, Father, please give them a he your healing power. Father, whatever issues else they have, just comfort them, be with them and watch over them. Father, thank you for this incredible journey with Jesus through the book of Mark. Thank you for Job and his enthusiasm and his love to share this message. Father, what a blessing it is. And Father, I pray that each and every one of us will be so excited and come to you with this little light of mine in our heart and let our light through Jesus Christ shine to everyone we come in contact with. Father, I thank you for blessing Mag Center in so many different ways. You've blessed us beyond our wildest dreams. And through those blessings, Father, we're able to reach out and partner with other through our community. I thank you so much for the Riverside Food Mission and the ability to, that we can two times a month deliver food to those who are less fortunate than we are. And to see the smile and the love on their faces, a lot of times, Father, they don't even speak English, but the gratitude and they pray with us is just unbelievable. Father, thank you for the Path of Life who helps provide food and clothing and shelter for those who are less fortunate. Thank you for that partnership, Father. Father, we've, we praise you for putting us where we are in this community, across the street from Pachapa School. So many opportunities for service there, Father. So continue to open doors for us that we can work together with Pachapa and take care of those children and their parents and their families, Father. What a blessing it is. Father, just go with us this week. Let our light of Jesus Christ shine brightly in everyone we come in contact with. Give us boldness, Father. We just love you, Father. I ask all of this in your son's precious name. Amen. I hope everyone has a very blessed week. Walking in sunlight, all of my journey, over the mountains, through the deep air. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine.